Welcome to the first video in our 10 gigabit home area network series. I'm gonna cover the five major points why it's finally time for 10 gigabit networking at home and the small business office. I'm gonna be brief and realistic as possible. Then in the following video, I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's essential to watch this video so you can understand important concepts necessary to blow the doors off your tired one gig networking gear. So let's get started. What? 10 gigabit networking has been around for a while now, actually since 2002 when 10 gigabit fiber was introduced. Then in 2006, SFP Plus Direct Attach Copper, DAC, hit the market and grew in popularity due to it being cheaper, lower latency, and lower power consumption. Also in 2006, 10 gbase T Copper was released, which requires the use of a Category 6, 6A, or 7 twisted pair cable. These cables showed a slightly higher latency and higher degree of power consumption in addition to the bulkier cable profile. Many believe these factors are what led to a greater adoption of direct attached copper. Although, as switch vendors work to lower power consumption of 10G base T and pricing comes down, many will start to consider 10G base T over direct attached copper as it's more flexible from a structured cabling point of view. So, currently, it's a matter of low latency and low power direct attached copper, versus longer runs and custom cable links by terminating them in-house, CAT6, 6A, and 7. Why? Why do I need a 10 gigabit network for my home area network, HAN, or small office home office SOHO, you say? Well, there are many reasons, and I'll list a few of them here for you to chew on. Obviously, it's not for everyone. That's a decision you will have to make for yourself. I'm just presenting the case why I feel it's finally time to hit the 10G turbo button on your pent up PC. First, I'll start with the 800 pound gorilla in the room, or should I say 1 10th pound SSD in the PC. Solid state drives have revolutionized storage transfer speeds across the consumer spectrum. Add to that PCIe SSD, mSATA, M.2, and the many other SSD based technologies to follow. Let me put it this way, a single Western Digital green drive can already max out a 1 gigabit network link. What? You say, that's crazy talk. Nope. Western Digital specs for a green drive currently show sustained transfer speeds of 123 megabytes for a 3 terabyte model. 123 megabytes per second is 984 megabits per second. There goes your 1 gig link up in smoke. Second, RAM matters. Have you ever noticed on the vendor's spec sheets, sometimes they list the buffer to host transfer speeds separate from the drive to host sustained speeds? Well, if we look back at the line buffer to host, the same green drive says 6 gigabits per second. Really? Sweet! Oh, yeah, and you have your operating system caching files on top of that, too. And here's the kicker. Your operating system is not limited to 6 gigabits per second. That is the limitation of the SATA 3 protocol. What I'm trying to say is that your various levels of cache provide an incredible boost on top of your storage drive speeds. So let's review. We are currently somewhere north of 6 gigabits per second transfer speeds. Third, there are a lot of miscellaneous considerations depending on what tech you employ at home or in the small office. For example, are you using RAID-based storage to serve up your data? Depending on how the RAID is implemented, it could be pushing a ton of data, but you'll never see the speed because you are capped at 1 gigabit per second or 125 megabytes per second. But what about link aggregation, LAG, or Team NIX? I should be able to combine multiple interfaces to get more than 1 gigabit per second, right? Yes and no. There's a big caveat here. You still can't exceed one gigabit per second if you are only connected using a single session. Now, if you are transferring using the link aggregation pipe and someone else makes another connection across the same pipe, they will have access to another slice of that one gig aggregate. Keep in mind, protocols play a major role in performance and network utilization. After all, this is a complicated topic. You didn't think this was going to be easy, did you? 
In upcoming videos, we're going to be walking you through a few strategies to squeeze the remaining bits from this sometimes ugly tech lemon. Who? Okay, now we are going to talk about who would benefit from 10 gig connectivity. I'm not going to spend much time on this topic since you probably have a good idea by now if you are interested in exploring what 10 gig performance can do for you. This video series is targeting your average geek, small business Soho, technology enthusiast, gamers, and really just people that enjoy working with stupid fast speeds. If set up correctly, you'll be transferring files pointlessly just to partake in the sheer power and awesomeness that is 10 gig networking. When? When should people demand 10 gig at home? Right now. Do you like massive amounts of performance even if you can't justify it? Absolutely! Let's review. The direct attached copper and 10 g base T standards, along with available hardware, have been in place since 2007. That was eight years ago. Seriously. Why am I not using this in my business or at home? Eight years is a long time in the IT world. And a lot can happen in that time frame. Point in case. It would take 14 hours, 39 minutes to transfer 6 terabytes over a 1 gig connection. With a 10 gig connection, that time would be reduced to 1 hour, 28 minutes. Of course, these numbers are based on pure calculation, but you get the point. Where? Alright, now you've decided you want a piece of this delicious 10 gig pie? I'm going to talk about what ingredients to use and where exactly to use them. You will need to identify the location in your network where you stand to gain the most benefit and work outward from there. Using my home area network as an example, I identified three main systems that would see substantial gains by migrating to a 10 gig pipe. My workstation, VMware server, and network attached storage, NAS, are poised to take full advantage of 10 gig speeds. My workstation is using SSDs, the VMware server has local SSD storage, and my NAS is using software RAID in the form of ZFS. Now that I've identified what systems will be upgraded to 10 gig, I need to consider connectivity. The goal is not to replace your existing 1 gig connections with the 10 gig links, but instead add a 10 gig port to each system. What we want to do is create a separate storage or high speed network in effect. This will simplify troubleshooting and make implementation easier in a number of ways. This will eliminate path issues and isolate your high speed network, keeping chatter to a minimum. Join me in the following video where we start with a simplified configuration. You only need two hosts to talk, and this is known as peer to peer. I will circle back around in a third video of this series and cover the above scenario where I describe connecting three systems together. In that video, I have an awesome tip to share. If you want to keep things affordable and upgrade your geek badge in the process, make sure you continue to the next video in this series on the topic of 10 gig peer to peer networking. Don't forget to like this video, share it, and subscribe to get follow on videos. Your support is tremendously appreciated, and I always look forward to your comments.